Hey folks, it's the CBT Nugget series for designing and implementing server infrastructure. I'm Chris Ward and today's nugget, as promised from other previous nuggets, is configuring iSCSI. We're going to take a look at those initiators and those targets and get them set up so you get the block level access that you get with a SCSI device over your Ethernet connections. At least several times I've mentioned how iSCSI is going to be your way to connect up to a SAN over the Ethernet, and as well as, of course, now storage pools, which is going to be the demo. I don't have a big refrigerator of uh, hard drives sitting here next to me, but we'll go ahead and uh, utilize our storage pool and show you how that all works. Plus, we're going to be introduced to the wonderful world of ISNS, the Internet Storage Name Service Protocol, which helps us interact between ISNS servers and ISNS clients and uh, you're gonna see how that all works. With iSCSI we're gonna primarily mention that I've got myself a server over here and this is going to be my target. Okay and my target is gonna actually be built on a storage space that has produced a virtual disk. Remember that's how we set these things up and this virtual disk is going to be the iSCSI target. Okay, so here's our iSCSI target that I've got set up over here on one of my servers. Over here, you are going to have your initiators. So this is going to be an initiator. This could be one, this could be one. And the initiator, remember, initiates a connection with a target. And it does it over, and this is why it's iSCSI, this is an Ethernet connection, right? So you got an Ethernet right here, and then this is an Ethernet connection over here. And by the way, this can also be virtual Ethernet as well if you're doing this within Hyper-V. So literally, you can set up targets within Hyper-V and initiators. And that's kind of a cool feature that a lot of people use, especially not only in lab environments, but if you have one beefy host, Hyper-V host, with a whole bunch of hard drives, but yet yeah, you just want one of your virtual machines to kind of be the storage spaces and handle all that, you can do that within that Hyper-V system. It used to be you had to actually install your iSCSI target, and, and that was kind of something you had to you know go in and actually install it separate, but it's actually part of the operating system, but you do need to add it as a role or feature. And then we can do that just by simply coming in here, add roles feature wizard. And uh, we can go ahead and skip that. And for the thing, installation type, it is role based or feature based. Select our server here. And then it is going to be found under file and storage services. Now I've gone ahead and actually installed it so we don't have to sit here and, and wait for it. But you'll notice it's right here iSCSI target server installed. And by the way, uh, something since we're already going to do it, server for NFS basically enables you to share files with Unix-based computers that use the network file system NFS protocol. So that's um, essentially what you need to be able to do. And I, I did that over on my other machine that will we'll show to you so you can kind of see that. But I've already installed it right here as the uh, target server, and this is where you would find it under file and iSCSI since I've already done it. I'll go ahead and cancel uh, on that. And so we come on over here and I'm going to go to my file and storage services and we have our volumes all set up here. And you notice that we have iSCSI and this is where you're going to find it, iSCSI. And right now there are no virtual disks uh, enabled right here as well as no targets. There is no uh, virtual hard drive. So you can come over here and well, I'm sorry, I got to create the virtual disk that I'm going to target. So we go new iSCSI virtual disk. And you can also import one as well if it's already been created. So let's scroll this on up here so we can see everything going on. And it's going to say, all right, we want a new disk. Now, where do we want to create this? Do we want to do it on the C drive, I drive, or L drive? Well, I stands for iSCSI. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and click Next. We can give it a name, a nice friendly name here. In this case, I'm going to call it Target 1, okay, just to kind of demo, because I'm going to be using this as a demo. We'll go ahead and click Next. It is going to tell you how much free space is enabled on this. 
you have fixed size dynamically expanding and differencing. We've seen this several times. It's the same principle here, except for the ability for this clear the virtual disk on allocation. Basically, it means that you're going to be handing over all of that to the iSCSI as a target for somebody to um, access as a drive. So in this case, we'll just go ahead and I'm not going to use all of it. I'll just use 2.0. We'll just use two gigs of that. We click on next. And now it says assign this to an existing target. Well, I don't have any, so we'll create a new one. Click next. Well, what are we going to name this? We'll call this uh, target one demo. All right, so we can do that. And then it's going to say we need to access the initiators or initiator that will access this iSCSI virtual disk. So I'll go ahead and add one. And uh, now, of course, uh, if I'd had a whole bunch that have already accessed the target server, this server before, I could select for them. If I know the IQN number, DNS name, IP address, or MAC address, you can do that, especially MAC address, nice and secure. In this case, I'm going to just browse and find, I think it's uh, SC01. Check the name. Yep, there it is. We go ahead and we click OK. And it says, all right, that's the one we're going to add. We go ahead and OK, and it automatically populates it with the IQN, which is, of course, that uh, iSCSI qualified name, which will, of course, be utilized when you use the ISNS. That's just FYI. 1991.05.com, Microsoft SC01. Sounds good. We click Next. Now, if I wanted to enable authentication, remember how I talk about in a previous nugget how you can put authentication on top of those storage spaces, but you need to use iSCSI. iSCSI allows authentication. Storage spaces essentially does not. So that's where we would do this. Not necessary for my demo purposes. All right, looks good. Click Create. Off it goes. And voila, we're done. So we have that. We click on close and notice it says we have a new iSCSI virtual disk target one. Notice it's clearing. So that way it can get all this space and then it's initializing. So right now it's not available. It's got to go through its whole process and do all that kind of thing. But uh, now I literally have an iSCSI uh, target that I can connect to with my initiator. It finishes up, notice that, and it says not connected. Nothing is connected. It's the target name is target one demo. So let's flip on over to my SC01. Okay, if now if I can only find it over here. Let's see. Ah, where'd it go? Ah, there we go. Ah. Helps to have it um, set up and ready to go. Okay, so here we go. Chris is losing it. So we are on SC01. And here you might think, oh, so to get my initiator, I just go over here to iSCSI, right? No, remember, the iSCSI, this is dealing with targets. So I would have to install, notice I don't have the target server on this particular machine. I would, this is where I'd go over to um, my manage and then add roles and features and do that, okay? So instead, we go over here to tools, iSCSI initiator. Now, right now, I don't have any discovered targets. I haven't done anything yet because I just set it up. So the nice thing about this is Quick Connect. This is kind of cool. So I just put fe01.nuggetlab.com using the DNS name of my target. And it says, aha, look, you have set up target one demo. And because this is SC01, my IQN, it's the accept, uh, you know, accepted, right? I've already set it up. Now, if I had authentication, it would have had asked me right here, hey, what's your username and password? But we didn't have any. Login succeeded. We click done, and I'm now connected. So obviously, if I come down here, and by the way, to disconnect, you just simply disconnect if you want to not have that connector uh, initiator uh, connection to the target. Uh, discovery now, there's a target portal that's available to me. They know that, hey, FE01 has your iSCSI targets, right? So I can maybe find others over there. You can have favorite targets. In this case now, I've only got one. Volumes and devices, well, notice it hasn't set this up. You can now automatically configure all available. So if you're using a particular volume or device, you can add that or configure all available devices. So you can do that. Now you can add a specific device just by simply clicking add and then put the drive letter or mount point. But I'm going to show you something else here in just a second. Then also radius. If you have radius servers, if you need to be able to connect through um, a radius, well, not a problem. You can set up your radius server authentication. And then also 
basic configuration. Remember how it automatically gave me SC01 Nugget Lab with IQN199105? If you want to change that, you can modify the initiator name just by simply clicking right there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click on OK. Now, I should be able to come over here, click on it, and find, uh, where's the drive? It's not here. Ah, now there's a little trick here that you need to do. I'm going to right click over here. Let's go to disk management. I'm going to show you something kind of cool. If I select this, let's bring it all the way down here. And as I scroll down through here, you notice I've got my disks and some of these I created in another nugget. And if I keep scrolling, ah, here it is. Notice it is offline. And so I have the new disk. And so I can go to here to properties of this disk. You can notice the policies, the volumes, the drivers, the details, and all the events, right? That's all kind of cool. Notice the device was started or configured at this particular time, and whenever you do it. And so what you can do is you can bring it online. And notice it is not initialized, and it is now unallocated. So now, if you want to, once you initialize the disk, now it's online, it's going to say, all right, you must initialize it. Do you want to use the master boot record or a good partition table. All right, we'll just stick with the uh, MBR. That's fine. It comes in. It's now a basic disk online. I right click on it and now I can just do a new simple volume and do the, you know, the typical thing. Notice there's our two gigs. That's available to us. Assign it to the following drive letter. Okay, we can call it, uh, eh, we'll call it what? Uh, o, just for fun. And then we'll say, do you want to format it? This is pretty, you know, familiar, right? And click Next, click Finish, and then off it goes. And now this is going to be my G drive, which is, of course, is my iSCSI target, which is available. And now, ah, now it shows up, you know. And I can give it a name and stuff like that if I wanted to. So if I come down here, and it says, notice it need to format. Um, sure, I think I already did that, but that's okay. Oh, yes. All right, yeah, it's already done. All right, so, okay, close that again. Sorry, I'm going to like that. Now, if I open up this, now you notice I have my new volume, zero. Where is this new volume? It's my storage space virtual disk over on my other computer. You got to love technology, right? And to a user, to a server, and I could do this, by the way, with a host, com you know, host computers, people's on their laptops, this is going to now show up as just a, it's, it's a drive. And, you know, however big we created it and whatever we did. And so that's pretty simple. Okay, real quick, ISNS. That's something that uh, we want to talk a little bit about here. And I'm going to have to flip back on over to my other computer. All right, flipped on over here. And if you notice, a lot of people would think that ISNS would be under iSCSI because that's what it primarily deals with, right? But if you notice, not here. Instead, you would obviously come up to Manage, Add Roles and Features to put the ISNS server in place. And then you come over here to Tools and click on ISNS Server. And then you begin to set up this environment. Now, remember, Internet Storage Name Service is essentially, and I like how one person calls it, it's DNS for your iSCSI devices or iSCSI notes. Now, by the way, is both your initiators and your targets. It just makes it easier. Instead of me going out, remember, I was like, oh, okay, let's see, hopefully I know the domain name of one of the targets. But instead, if you're running ISNS, it would have populated all available targets there for you as it went out and started talking about, you know, oh, hey, who's available? And basically, it advertises that over the Ethernet network. By the way, this works in the real world. You can use ISNS for both Fiber Channel and iSCSI, as long as you have uh, Fiber Channel Gateway out there. But the problem is, is for us in Microsoft world, guess what? Only iSCSI, that's the only thing that it supports the discovery of. It doesn't allow you to do Fiber Channel devices, which, okay, you do use uh, something else, okay? Now, what you would have is what are called nodes. Nodes are essentially your targets, your initiators. It can also be any associated portals with that and any management nodes. Now, initiators and targets would then register with your ISNS server, and then the initiators are going to go to the ISNS server and go, hi, who's available for me? And that would then obviously be utilized for this. Now, you can take this database and then you can break it up into what are known as discovery domains. Think about discovery domains as kind of like zones. 
In fact, because we're kind of talking about it, it's kind of like DNS for your storage devices, and you know that kind of makes a lot of sense. Now, they have a default one that's already there, or you can create your own. So I can go ahead and create one and call it, you know, Chris Access, okay? And once I do that, then it's like, okay, you've got Chris Access. Do you want to add any um, iSCSI targets? Now, if they're already registered, you can click on the Add button and get those, but I'll add a new one. We'll do SC01, okay? So we click on OK, and boom, I SC01, registered, yes, type unknown. We don't have that alias entity and those kind of things. But it eventually you can break these down. And by the way, you can break them up into even more, into discovery domain sets. And that way, again, you can add discovery domains that are then administered in a set versus just one by one. And this is, of course, in your large environments uh, for that. So these are just some things that you can have in, in this particular uh, environment and in, in everything that you're creating. And the nice thing about ISNS is again, it is all allowing your clients to know about targets that are out there. And that's essentially what you need to know. And it's a very simple, straightforward setup, as you can see right here, once you get your uh, targets and initiators registered. So we took a look at iSCSI initiators, targets, ISNS, and even briefly showed you what NFS is all about. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for joining.